Hi everybody, welcome to today's edition of the CrossFit Games Update Show. I'm Sean Woodland with Tommy Marquez and Pat Sherwood, and we now know two of the individual workouts for the regional competitions in 2016. And just a couple of years ago, these two events that we know about would have been aggressive for the games. I can't help but laugh a little bit. I think Dave Castro in his old age has lost his <laughs> mind. These events, had you told me, hey, this isn't day one of regionals, this is actually a leak of the 2016 mm -hmm. games events. I'd have been like, wow, we're really stepping it up. But at the regional level, I can't wait. Yeah. I love the Instagram teases, too. Mm -hmm. It gave a little bit of a hint of what we were going to see. Everybody started speculating. I don't think anyone predicted this. And it was clearly a step just up to, up to another level. Day one for the individuals has two events. And here's what they are. And they're pretty different events. Workout one is a snatch ladder, 10 reps, eight reps, six, four, and two. The weight increases every time while the reps drop and you have two minutes at each station, three minutes at the final station. We'll get into that in a second. Then final workout two for the day is regional Nate. Strict muscle ups, strict handstand pushups, and some kettlebell snatches in there as well. So right after two events, I mean, we're going to find out really fast who the contenders are here. Well, historically, what do we used to say? That day two is movie mm -hmm. day, right? That's when we really learned a lot, yeah, who was well-rounded. Day one, I mean, okay, after two events, we haven't tested everything. You might still have some holes in your game, but I've got a feeling your top five athletes are going to be people we talk about all weekend yeah. long. They are absolutely pulling no punches with the complexity of the movements, the skill required to complete these workouts, and the loading with the barbell. And if the people that are going to be griping, you might be here complaining about, griping. <laughs> about these never workouts. never happens. Well, they're probably not going to be the people that are going to be in contention come day three. Because if you have yeah. a serious problem with this, you don't understand what it takes to make it to the yeah, end. Yeah, exactly right. Let's talk about workout number one. And this one features the heavy barbells, and it's a snatch lap. Ladder. It starts with 10 reps for the men at 185, 135 for the women. Then the weight gets heavier each time. And the reps go down. Now you do have two minutes at each station to complete all the work. Three minutes at the final station. That's a total of 11 minutes. So if you don't get the work done at a certain barbell inside of a certain time cap, you will not be able to continue. So this one, you know, one barbell that gets increasingly heavier. So pretty straightforward. But man, there is a lot to think about with this workout. What jumps out at me for workout number one is what jumps out at me actually for day one, and that is, holy smokes, we are testing the women almost like we never have yeah. before. If you take a look back to the snatch speed ladder of the games last year, I mean, there are some weights that repeat then and they repeat this year, and usually there's kind of a rough percentage mm -hmm. from men's loadings to women's loadings. This year, we have bumped that up. So for example, usually if we see a 205 bar for the men, we see like a 120 for the women. Mm -hmm. It's 145, it's 25 pounds heavier. The 245 from the games last year was 155. Now it's 165. Mm -hmm. So while both genders are going to be tested, man, the women that make their way through that, uh, that snatch ladder, They've got some skill. Yeah. And because of that loading even more so, what jumped out at me is you have to be sure you're taking care of both your grip and your shoulders the entirety of this workout mm -hmm. with your pacing. You don't want to be silly and just blow yourself up on the first two barbells because you're comfortable at those weights and then step up to the next three and not be able to peel them off the floor. I think especially for the big dogs, this workout starts at the 225 yeah. barbell. So two questions about this event. Do we have more people finish or more people who don't finish, and of the people who do finish, what do you think a time that they could hit would be? For me, uh, I, I think more people are not going to finish just because those last two barbells are pretty heavy, and although most regional athletes are gonna be able to snatch that, they won't be able to do so under that kind of duress. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go out and say I think someone might cut the time cap in half, around 5.30, maybe six minutes. Wow. It's such a unique, different workout. I'm, I'm on that same boat as you. I think there's a reason that speed is not part of the name mm -hmm. of this, that it's pacing, pacing, pacing. You know, when we go on social media and check out the athlete's training, what, what is it traditionally? It's five barbells that you blitz through. There's 30 heavy snatches to do in this, so I think whoever wins this thing is going to make that methodical trot through, but I still think that the time cap's kind of aggressive. When you first saw this event, what were some names that popped into your head as far as people who you thought would do well here? Man, well, I went back, looked at that uh, snatch speed ladder from 2015, just as kind of one of my best metrics. Unfortunately, John Perra, who won last year, he is not competing at the regionals. I'd love to see him, but 
Ben Smith, Matt Fraser, household names, they did well. I would expect them to do well also. And then on the women, Brooke Entz is so dominant with the barbell, she has to be in the conversation. And then somebody who didn't do well at the games on this event was Camila blanc Bosnega, hit with a couple right. of no reps. I don't think that's gonna be the case, and I think she's going to murder event number one. So I, I agree with you on the men. I think you add Paul Tremblay mm -hmm. in there. He's a guy who yeah. loves to cycle a barbell. He's very strong and very capable in that regard. On the women, another person who didn't do well in that snatch speed ladder, but for different reasons, and that's Cara Webb. She's one of the strongest there is in this game in regards to this movement, and so I think she showed us in the open that she can cycle a heavy barbell in 16.2, and I think she's gonna be one that's gonna be a sleeper on top of Sarah Sigmund's side. Let's move on to event number two, and that is Regional Nate. It is a 10 round, 20 minute time cap, 10 rounds of four strict muscle ups, seven strict handstand push ups, and then 12 kettlebell snatches, 70 pounds for the men, and then 53 pounds for the women. Unlike event number one, a lot to talk about here, some different components. Where is the sticking point here? I mean, this workout is a huge step up gymnastics wise, and I think it's gonna be a little bit different for men and women. For the men, I think the sticking point is really gonna be finding a pace that you can stick to from round one through hopefully round 10. Some pace where you can keep moving, you're not staring at the rings, or not staring at the kettlebell, not staring at the wall. I think for the women, it all comes down to the strict muscle up, who's been practicing their gymnastic basics and who has a really strong foundation gymnastics wise is going to excel. This is also somebody that just in their training has focused on the right elements, shall mm -hmm. you say? There's a lot of interference in here. Us regular recreational athletes, we can do a lot of great workouts, like Fran's a good workout mm -hmm. because the pull-ups and thrusters don't really interfere with each other. Games they athletes don't? have to be, exactly. <laughs> Games athletes have to excel with a lot of intentional interference. So blow up your shoulders and triceps, well they don't get a rest when you kick into the handstand push-ups. Neither on the muscle-ups or the handstand push-ups can you use your hips so it's raw strength. Then you pick up this miserable kettlebell, okay you can use your hips, but now you're locking it out, shoulders and triceps, going back. So we're gonna see which of these athletes really was intelligent with their training. 10 rounds in 20 minutes at first glance. It's no problem. Yeah, it seems like, I mean, that is, that's aggressive. How many people can finish this, and not only finish it, but maybe put up a time that we didn't think was possible. What's a good time gonna be? I, I don't know if we'll see anyone break 19. Yeah. I, I, I think just finishing this workout is phenomenal. You're a superhero if you finish this workout. I've heard some people around the office saying like, now nah, you guys are crazy, like the, the top dogs are gonna kinda mm -hmm. move through this really well. And just the more I think about it, the more I'm like, I, I I think that's a yeah. bit ambitious. I think it's almost, even though it's 10 rounds for time, I think it's almost gonna be an AMRAP style and just how far yeah. do you get before that clock expires. If somebody does finish it, or a handful, I'm incredibly impressed. Yeah, I guarantee you, it's gonna be more than we thought. It, it, it always is. It always is. Again, what names that come to the top of your head as far as people who are gonna just murder this. All right, so here's what I did on this. I looked back at the 2015 Regional Event 6, which had chest a bar for pulling and some strict handstand push-ups at a deficit. And then I looked back at the 2014 regional, which had the legless rope climb, so you get in that strict pulling. Some athletes didn't compete both years, et cetera, et cetera, but who jumped out as both? Men, Fraser, Hepner, Cody Anderson, Josh Bridges, Dan Bailey, they all mm -hmm. demonstrated capacity in both areas. On the female side, Camille LeBlanc again, so I think she could have a great day one. Uh, Sam Briggs, David's daughter, Holcomb Haran Bridgers, so, I think there's a good mix, but these are the top names we yeah. talk about all the time because they're well-rounded. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I, it's hard to argue with your pick. You use a great logic there, and I use some of the similar met similar metrics, but I think someone who uh, like Kari Pierce, who's kind of mm -hmm. new oh, to the yeah, scene, has a great one. gymnastics background, I think will do she fantastic that. in that workout. Michelle LaTondra, she seems like she's just solid all the way around. She does things the right way. She practices progressions. And then for the men, two guys that seem like freak athletes to me that can just do anything whenever it's thrown at them. Hear this. Uh, Noah Olson and Scott Panchik. So I think those uh, yeah. two guys, they've got the capacity, they just seem to absorb everything that gets thrown their way, and I think they'll be fine. What if I say someone's gonna go sub-15 on this? Am I crazy? Ooh, man, <laughs> now you're just stirring the pot. I just I wanna mean, see, over or under, uh, maybe somewhat, maybe. Well, maybe. I mean, what's, what's, no? what's, okay. What happens is we always stand up here and say, this is the That's limit. why I'm saying No it. master's gonna yeah. pull 600, yeah. so. 
That's I why guess I'm it's it. possible, but I, I will be. I'm putting my fit down. Shocked. Okay, Tommy I don't think says that's no. I think, I think it might. I okay, think it might. all right. Okay, all right. Well, you're a believer. If, I am. If that's day one, man, I can't wait to find out what day two is. We'll be back tomorrow to break that down. For Pat Sherwood and Tommy Marquez, I'm Sean Woodland. We'll see you guys soon.